Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Curiosity, a cooperative deck building game. It plays one to four players, takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes per scenario, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Curiosity, you are playing as a cat, entering the catacombs, attempting to stop the cataclysm. As you gather your resources based on your deck and your character, you are going to fight across guardians and nightmares, attempting to defeat them in each scenario. Thusly, you will then go into the shop, gather new rewards, bonuses, trophies, and unique gems that will help you along your way. If you can complete three encounters, you will complete the scenario. And in the game, there's also a campaign mode that allows you to progressively increase increase your different characters and other guardians that you might have to challenge along the way and off, 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 also unlock different characters that you can use throughout the game when you come back to play again in the game Curiosity. Now let's go ahead and talk about the setup, then we'll go ahead and talk about how to play, and finally my review. The setup for the game Curiosity is fairly easy. Each player is going to be getting a cat. I will be playing the ranger and Callie will have the lion heart. Each character is going to have their own unique deck that's represented on the card on the bottom right. It will tell you each of the different colored cards you'll need to gather to create your deck. So for instance, the ranger will need a white, a pink, three blue, four green, and a red card, which you will shuffle and then place next to your character card to create the deck you will be utilizing for your character. Each uh, character is also going to receive an action token that they can use uh, throughout the game in order to enact their special unique ability that each character has. Additionally, depending on the number of players in the game, you're going to have an assortment of different guardians in the game, as well as you're going to be placing on top of the first uh, guardian that you'll be fighting a card, one of these guys here, called a fear card, which you will be attempting to defeat. And then of course, after you've defeated all the fears on a guardian, you can defeat the guardian him or herself. There's also going to be a loot deck based on the number of players, which will have gems in it, along with a double gem for each player playing the game and an assortment of catnip cards, which are basically going to be your lives in the game, uh, which will also be set aside based on the number of players. Set aside any trophies as well. And of course, based on the number of guardians and players that you'll have at the beginning of the campaign or scenario will be how many initiative tokens or markers you will need. In this case, for a two player game, we've got one guardian and two players, thusly allowing you to have three initiative cards. Each player is going to get a player reference card, and if you need, on the back of it will be the Hunter's Catalog, which you can use to track when you complete a specific um, portion of the scenario, allowing you to go into the Hunter's Catalog shop to purchase new upgrades. Speaking of the shop, you're going to need to set that up as well. Place all your single icon cards with the separation of colors, your double icons and your triple icons, and make sure that the double and triple icons are locked. Additionally, go ahead and set additional player tokens aside, which you can purchase at this time, and then you're going to also have player abilities. Uh, there's going to be additional double and triple loot cards that you may or may not need throughout the game, and any additional extra cards you may have, whether it be guardians or additional uh, initiative cards, you can go ahead and set aside as you probably won't be utilizing them for this specific scenario campaign or the arcade mode, which I will be showing you as far as how the game plays. Basically, that is all you need for the setup of the game. If you're not playing campaign mode, which comes with a bunch of unlockables, you can set those aside as well. Let's go ahead and explain how you play, and then of course, how you win. So here we have the two player arcade mode of the game. And the first thing you're going to be doing is flipping over one guardian, as well as a number of fear cards equal to the number on the top right hand side of the guardian card. And go ahead and flip the top one face up so that you'll know what icon or icons you'll need in order to defeat that card. And uh, also to start the encounter, you'll be taking a number of initiative cards based on the number of guardians and players and shuffling them up and then dealing them out randomly to guardians and players, thusly allowing them to determine who goes first, second, third, and so on and so forth based on the number of guardians and players in the game. To begin the encounter, you're also going to be having each player draw four cards from his or her deck. And that, those are the cards that you'll be utilizing throughout your turn in order to attempt to defeat fear and guardian cards. Uh, when you begin the first uh, encounter, uh, I should say, you're going to be dealing with one guardian, and then you're going to move on to two, and then three, in which case after that, you'll go to the hunter shop, then you'll fight guardians, and um, you'll fight the fear cards once again, hunter shop, and finally you'll fight them again. And if you can go through all that, you win the game. Right now though, we have our initiative cards set up and it looks like our guardian's going to go first. And guardian's turns are very simple. Based on the number of guardians that come out are what are going to happen in the exact same order. You're going to do whatever its ability is 
and then you are going to do damage equal to the number on the bottom left hand side of the guardian card to your loot deck. And these are just gonna go from the top of the deck into its discard pile. And the reason why you do that is because when the deck runs out from the loot deck, you'll be taking one of these catnip cards, placing it into the discard pile of the loot deck, and thusly removing cards from this deck, because once this deck runs out, you'll lose the game, or at least that's one way you can lose the game. Uh, the different characters are gonna have different abilities, which I'll explain in the review, but this is basically going to trigger, then the damage will go through, and the next player is going to take their turn. And in this case, it would be the Lion Heart. On a player's turn, normally speaking at the very beginning of the game, there's no assist cards available for the players. But I went ahead and set them, set them there just so that you can see what, can, what you can do. So you can choose to A, leave them there, or B, you can place them into your discard pile here and place new ones out. Assist cards, generally speaking, are going to be used by your allies in the game. They are the ones who are going to be able to use these cards to assist with the cards that they have in their hand to defeat the icons needed on the Fear and Guardian cards. In this case here, I have drawn three red cards, I've drawn a yellow card, and I am going to attempt to defeat this Fear card here. Now this Fear card needs two hearts and a green card. Sadly, I do not have that. Uh, I do have a unique ability, if I use this token here, that will allow me to switch between red and purple. Whenever I want to play a red card, I can play a purple or vice versa, but that's not going to help me. I need these specific red, pink cards in order to defeat this fear. So if I want, I can choose to discard any number of these guys here, and maybe I could place out a card like this guy here. And if there's nothing else I really want to do, if I can't defeat this card here, I would simply go ahead and draw a card or cards equal to my hand size, and then I will end my turn. If at any point my entire deck runs out, I will reshuffle it and form a new deck. But I'll also do the same thing I would do normally for this discard or this uh, loot deck here and take one of these catnip cards, put it into my discard pile, shuffle it, and that is going to be included in my deck as well. Catnip cards are not only dead cards, but if at the beginning of your turn, you have a full hand of catnip cards, you will become catatonic. And if you become catatonic in a game, you and your allies will lose. And that is the second way you can lose the game. Then we'll move on to the next player and the same thing would happen. And hopefully they or they may or may not have the cards needed. I just happen to have these guys here. Maybe they were in his hand. I can choose to go ahead and spend these cards along with my ally's green card that he placed down and discard them. Uh, I will discard his and his discard pile and mine into mine and thusly defeat the fear card attached to the guardian. When you defeat a fear card, you are going to gain a loot. You'll take a loot from the pile and you'll put it into your deck or your discard pile thusly allowing you to utilize those not only in the game for specific reasons whether it be to discard uh, the catnip cards from your deck or after the scenario portion of the first portion of this uh, scenario is over or I should call it encounters over I can go over here to the locked cards and I'll be able to purchase certain things with my rewards and then I can go ahead and try and defeat this guy as well he functions the same as a fear card but generally speaking has more symbols if we're able to defeat this guardian here, we are going to gain a trophy. And trophies are valuable resources that we can use to buy stuff in the hunter's catalog. And we'll also gain loot equal to the bottom right portion of the card here. And this says five. So I could gain five loot by defeating this guy here. Then after you've defeated all of the guardians, you'll move on over here. If you go through all three turns and you do not defeat the guardians, you'll simply rinse and repeat until either the players lose by becoming A, catatonic, or B, losing all the catnip cards in their catnip deck. Um, or if they do, they'll move on to this phase here. And this is the um, hunter's phase here. This is the, what, what do you want to call it? The hunter's catalog, I believe, yes. And the way it works is pretty simple. Each of these different sets will cost a certain amount of resources. You can unlock them by spending the resources, utilize them by gathering them and taking them into their dis your discard pile, which will give you stronger decks. Certain uh, types of abilities will open or unlock, and you'll be able to spend resources to gather these cards and also put them in your deck, which will give you unique special abilities when you draw them and of course there's also going to be these ability stones that you can utilize and unlock as well thusly Im improving upon your deck and your character as you go along throughout the game 
Once you finish this, if you chose to do it, because there's a cost to it as well, you have to discard cards down from your loot deck in order to do so, just to initiate it. But if you do at the end of this phase here, you'll draw back up and kind of do a little bit of a reset, and then you'll fight the next guardian or guardians. And in this case, for the next uh, scenario or next portion of the um, encounter, you'll flip over two guardians. Then you'll take the number of fear cards represented by the numbers on the guardians and place them on, and then flip them face up, add another initiative token and shuffle these guys up and begin the next portion of the encounter, thusly continuing until you get through all three. And that's the basic idea of how to play Curiosity with a little bit of extra stuff we can talk about about the campaign mode and the extra abilities and what you can do to help yourself uh, during my review right now. So as they say, curiosity did in fact kill the cat. And if you're too curious in the catacombs while avoiding the cataclysm, this might be the game that is going to get you fried, or catatonic in that case. And uh, it is basically a deck builder of sorts. It's a cooperative deck builder in which you are trying to build your deck of cards, improve your character, and utilize cards to the best of your ability, avoiding the trash cards, which are going to be these nasty catnips, and attempting to defeat the different guardians available in the field that have unique abilities. Some are a little more challenging. Some are a little bit easier. Easier ones have more fear cards. More challenging ones have less and are quicker to be defeated. And you need to work with your players in order to determine what cards need to be added to the assist piles, what cards need to be in your hand, and how you wish to utilize them. Each character has its own unique benefits and uh, setbacks based on the cards that are available in his or her deck. This game kind of reminds me of Five Minute Dungeon in the way in which you attack the different guardians by utilizing the cards in your hand that are, have symbols on them that require the specific symbols to defeat the guardians. But instead of a quick play-by-play, -play, this one here is a little bit more meticulous and strategic as to what cards go where and when you need to play them and with who. Because sometimes you might have one piece of the puzzle, somebody else might have another piece, and somebody else might have the final required pieces. Loot can be shared, loot can be distributed evenly, and some loot can also just be given to a specific player, and that's based on the different types of ways that loot is distributed. Most trophies are given to the team, but the uh, loot cards that you get in your deck after them being distributed are yours to spend during the Hunter's Catalog phase. Now, as far as the game goes, it's pretty straightforward. Draw cards, play assist cards, attack other, play attack other guardians, work with other players so that they can defeat them if you cannot. Use your abilities wisely because you only get a certain amount and they're expensive, costly in order to get back into your uh, player board so that you can use them again. Powerful abilities and all characters are different with unique decks and abilities, which is nice. The Hunter's Catalog provides you with a large variety of upgrades. When you start with just one heart, which is really useful at the beginning of the first round of the game, and then move to two hearts, it gets even better. And finally, three presents you with a ton of, of, of ease. Uh, but it's also a little bit more challenging because things are still going to be complex as the monsters that you will have to fight in the game. I also like the fact that you can add different player abilities and there's upgrades and tiers to those abilities. And when you draw them, there's a cost to them and you can utilize them to help you defeat the guardians and their fear cards. So there's a lot of strategy. It's kind of like a deck builder, five minute dungeon type of a game in which you need to gather the specific icons that you need in order to defeat the monsters, but with unique uh, abilities that are presented on the cards you can add to your deck, and things kind of uh, come together, so to speak, as you go from each different portion of Guardians to the next. Having to worry about being catatonic is dangerous, and you have to make sure that your hand is never full or have three of them, because if you draw another from your deck and you've got a lot in there, you will make everyone lose, which is not great. And if you take too long and these catatonic uh, or these catnip cards start coming out, you're going to have a lot of trouble as well, because you're not going to be able to complete the game by the time these guys, guys get removed. So too much damage means too many of these cards go into your loot deck, which can also affect the type of loot you get. You think you've gotten loot by beating a fear card? No, you got a catnip because you took too long and that's going to cost you and make you suffer. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's an enjoyable idea of the game. I like the theme and the idea of going through the dungeon with cats working together, fighting against the darkness, fighting against the guardians as you attempt to defeat them with weird types of guardians like a forbidden string or a protein snack or potent snack and so on and so forth. Things you wouldn't think about fighting as a cat in this type of dungeon. Maybe it's just kind of a lazy cat going through a hallway at night and thinking all of these things are super scary. I don't know, but I like the theme of the game. I also like the idea of a campaign mode with unlockables and new characters and unique new guardians that you'll have to face along the way. And as you unlock them, they also unlock in the game mode so you can play them in arcade mode as well. Very cool. And the customization of a deck. 
excellent as well. The artwork is, is okay for me. I think I'd like to see a little bit more detail as far as the cats go. I'd like to see it lighter. I'm hoping that when they uh, finish this game in production, they are going to enhance the brightness on some of the characters so that they're easier to see, so that the characters are more visible. Sometimes on these, it's, it's pretty dark. Some of them are okay. Some of them are just a little too dark for me. Uh, this game has a lot of work that it needs to do with uh, verbiage, or I think that's the word verbiage. It's where you are basically going to be uh, discarding a card, exiling a card, uh, removing a card. They have other terms in this game, many other terms, and sometimes they don't clearly explain what they do. Does healing a card exile it? Does it put it back into the deck? Does it put it into your discard pile? We know what discarding does, and some of them are explained well, and others need to be worked on. Uh, because if you don't know what the term of a specific card does, you might not know where it goes, and that affects gameplay tremendously. Um, that being said, it's fairly straightforward as to how it is played and how you work together. I like the cooperative nature of the game and the complexities and the fact that you can play with pretty much anybody in a game like this with unique twists and turns. It's kind of a little bit video game-esque, little bit deck builder-esque and a whole lot of cats and if you like cats and deck builders this is one i would encourage you to take a look at down below on the kickstarter campaign to see if you would be interested in picking it up thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game curiosity by pleadies games if you're interested in the game link down below in the description like i said go ahead and like comment and subscribe to the channel hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you can see more of our videos here located on youtube every day at 4 p.m and of course speaking of time sunday at 6 30 p.m pst Every Sunday, we do a live stream where we play games literally just like this one here. And if you're interested, you can watch us play games. And if you're extra interested, Patreon. One dollar a month goes a long way, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. For updates on Moon Show, you should be checking it out on the campaign. We're almost done. Games are on the boats pretty soon here, and we're basically finished with production. So let's get that shipping underway. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to not being too curious with you next time.